And I've got the joy deep down in my heart I'm waking up with your love from the start I'm chasing the rainbow through the rain I know it's gonna it's gonna Welcome to Coffee, where friends of faith gather just to talk. Around this table, coffee is more than a beverage. It's a conversation. Coffee, a conversation of friends of faith to encourage and equip. Hello, my name is Kim Crable, and I'm delighted to tell you that I'm going to be your coffee host. You see, coffees are one way God rescued me more than 25 years ago. I was suffering from the nation's number one disease, loneliness, and I was exhausted, exhausted from trying to overcome that loneliness by being what everyone expected me to be without even knowing who I was. I was ready to find and discover the true me. And so I invited some friends into my home to sit around my very own kitchen table for coffee just to really talk. From those early conversations, I learned that God did not create us to be alone. So how in the world could we possibly be our best on our own? I learned that we are much more alike than we are different. And as we gathered to explore all that we had in common, I found healing for so many of the hurts that I had carried for so long. And do you know the best part about it? I discovered that within my hurts, I could give hope to all those around me. As we gather here for coffee each week, I want this to become your favorite and most comfortable TV place ever. We will explore topics that are relevant to our lives today. And I'll introduce you to a friend or two who will be real with the issues about that, where they are and how they're facing that issue in their life. All along the process, we will develop relationships that really matter. My hope and my prayer is that as we are real and relevant and relational in our conversations, that you'll find that it's right on time for where you are in your life. So let's begin our first talk with some conversation as I invite you to meet some of my friends. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for joining me for coffee. Would you just take a minute and introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Diana, born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland, and now I live in York, Pennsylvania. I have two grown sons, and I'm a business professional. And I'm just so happy to be here with you guys today. Oh, so glad to have you. I'm Ashley from Hunt Valley, Maryland. I've been married to my husband for 14 years, and we have three growing children who are the light of our lives. I'm so grateful for my beautiful family. I'm also very artistic and creative, and that's found its way into my career as an interior designer, which I'm also really excited about. Oh, nice. yeah. Awesome. awesome. Hi, I'm Linda Goble, and I'm from Augusta, Georgia. I've been married for 32 years, and I was working in the business field for 35 years, but I have just recently retired. And that has been a blessing because I can come and do those things that are a passion for my heart. And one of those things is being able to sit and gather around a table and to talk and have conversations with my friends. Oh my gosh, thank you all so much for joining us and thank you for joining us. You know, we're gonna take time, I've known you all for quite a while, so we're yes. gonna talk about this thing called friendship in our very first conversation. So we're gonna take just a break and come back because we're gonna dive in, aren't we, into this yes. deep yes. subject. Yes. We'll see you right back. Thank you for joining us for coffee. Some of the messages talked about today come from Kim's books. To go deeper into the messages, we invite you to learn more. Burdens to Blessings is Kim's signature work that is being used to help people. Men, women, and teens all over the world discover the power of their stories. Burdens to Blessings can also be used as a study in your church, community, or in your own home. To assist your group, you can order a set of professionally filmed DVDs with chapter-by-chapter -chapter teachings by Kim herself, as well as a leadership manual and teaching tips. Cherished is Kim's 365-day devotional. This book will help you discover God's love for you each day. Infinitely More is Kim's latest book 
that is based on the promise of Ephesians 3.20. God wants to show you how you can truly live your more. You can order these books at our website, kimcrable.org. That's kimcrable.org. Thank you again for joining us. We at Coffee with Kim look forward to hearing from you. Welcome back to Coffee, conversations of friends of faith to encourage and equip. I have my friends with me here, and we're going to dive into this subject of loneliness. So let's talk about that. My feelings were I did feel so alone. And do you know that the U.S. News reports that three out of four of us will report that we feel lonely? It's, that's amazing to me in the, in the world of social media where we can gather 500 friends seemingly overnight. What, does, what is happening to us? And have you all, what do you think about this loneliness? Did you, have you felt it like I have? Absolutely. Um, you know, with the social media, you just feel like you are behind the screen. You're not really connecting. And so people just get to see the highlight reels of everybody else's life. And it's like, oh, they're so perfect and they're so this. And you're like sitting there like feeling helpless. Like, you know, how come I'm not out and have all these things, you know, happening to me? So, um, you know, it's a it's not a get out and touch someone and look yes. into someone's eyes. The real and connection. So, absolutely. The real absolutely. connection. Absolutely. Yes. What about that real connection, Ashley? Well, I feel like when you first said loneliness, I feel like I could totally relate to that because in the past, I've even just had moments of being in a room full of people. Mm -hmm and feeling totally alone yeah. and isolated yes. and that feeling of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Like, do these people like even see the real me? Yeah. Or, and being terrified of that, mm -hmm. you actually. Feel like they're invisible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that what you said there, it, 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 it's such a valid point because so many times we think of loneliness as like a social isolation. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't socially isolated. Mm -hmm. I was leading a women's ministry. I was mm -hmm. very involved in my community. but my loneliness reached a desperate level, you know, so it's a feeling of being in the midst of the group and just totally not being understood, not knowing where to go right. with those feelings. That is the loneliness mm -hmm. that we're feeling. So what does that look like? I mean, how does that, how does that type of loneliness, how is it manifested in your life? What does it cause us to do? Causes us to withdraw, you know, it causes us to take ourselves out of the mainstream, you know, and if you, you, if you have a set of friends and you feel like they're not on the same path, you just, you know, and, and they're not getting you instead of still leaning in and, and trying to find points of connection, you just withdraw. You stop meeting up with them. You stay at home. You go from work to straight to home and you sort of isolate yourself. And, and that's not that's not the answer. And, you know, one of the things that I did that you just said in so many ways is, you know, when I lost myself in that loneliness and I would pr project, you know, my feelings, I didn't see it on other people. Mm -hmm. And so I began to try to be like everyone else. Mm -hmm. I can remember walking in churches and social mm -hmm. events. And I remember I would think mm -hmm. if I could just find one person mm -hmm. that didn't look perfect, I would run to them mm -hmm. and I would say, I need you to be my friend. <laughs> you know, I just needed something. Just give me a clue, an right. indication. But I never saw that. And I remember seeing this show on TV. TV one time where this woman was battling these, these same type feelings and finally she just gave up and she went running from her friends and her friends went running after her and she said to them as she was sliding down into deep depression physically and, yeah. and, and spiritually. But she said, I can't keep up with you all anymore. Right. I can't do it. I can't be all things. One of the ladies looked at her and said, but we don't have it all together either. Yeah. We're suffering behind closed doors. Yeah, and I'll never forget that one lady looked up at the others and she said, we should have been talking. Mm -hmm. We should have been talking, real yes. talk. Authentic. And that's why yes. I want us to have this show, this program at this time, because I believe that 
the the evil the evil one that because this the, what we're talking about can isolate us to keep us from even doing what it is that we were created to do and who we were created to be yes. i don't know about you all but when i didn't know who i was i tried to become who everyone expected mm. me to be absolutely and isn't it exhausting Yes. It is. And I feel like you lose essentially who God created you to be when you're conforming to what you think everyone else wants you to be. Comparing yourself with yeah. everybody Absolutely. else. Yeah. Absolutely. Comparison is, is uh, definitely the yes. downward yes. spiral. Yes. And what about fear? I mean, we talk about, you know, what are the components that cause us to... I, I was so afraid to... It's like, like I the said, if I could find judged. someone... Absolutely. That's right. The fear of not mm -hmm. measuring up. The rejection. Being, yes. That's right. And Absolutely. not being accepted exactly. for just who you are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, when did you all, did you get to a place where you just thought, just, I know with me, I finally got to a place to where I realized, I can remember one night thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose all my friends if I really tell them mm -hmm. who I am, my troubles, mm -hmm. my past abuse, right. all those things. But it dawned on me, Kim, they're not, they're not your friends. They want to be, but you're not letting them in. Right. You're not allowing them to see the real you. Mm -hmm. Did you all have moments like that where you just got so tired of being where no one really knew who you really were? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, well, absolutely. I just got to the place where it was like, you know, I, I have to bring the walls down. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, year after year, you, you build these walls up and until you bring them down and actually let your friends come in, you know, you're, you're so busy trying to keep it together. You're trying to keep your kids together. You're trying to keep your house together. And, and finally, you know, I got to a point where I was like, look, you have to accept me for who I am. I have flaws just like everybody else. And when I did that, you know, they were more open to me as well. And, and it's like, you know, you really can begin to heal and just, you know, there's a freedom there, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, and when you have those friends, they don't judge you. Right. They are there to lift you up. But that's not what we think. We think no. they're going to judge us. Yes. We think we're not going to be accepted. Yes. Those are the lies. Yes. You know, I, what you were talking about describes so perfectly what happened to, to me when I first decided to let those seven women in around a table just like this having our coffee. Mm -hmm. I just decided I have to share who I am. I, mm -hmm. I thought I was walking around in, vertically, mm -hmm. but on the inside I was crawled up in fetal position, yes. crying, yes. just desperate for someone to really understand me, just to be my mm -hmm. friend, That's to nice. really see me for who I was. And I'll never ever forget when I found the courage, and it does take courage, right ladies? Yes, when I first decided I was going to open my heart mm -hmm. up to the thought of friendship, when I began to share my story with people who really thought that they knew me, mm -hmm. I'll never forget after I finished talking about the hurt, the pain, the abuse, and I just closed my eyes. And I think that maybe I was giving them time to escape. <laughs> it's like, they can't handle this. I just close my eyes yeah. and let them run out the door, right? right. But I didn't hear any movement, right. you know? Yeah. And I remember when I opened my eyes, mm -hmm. I saw the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen was I saw tears yes. and I saw mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm and I saw acceptance. Mm -hmm. And for the first time since I was four years old, I knew I was gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. Because people do accept you, and more so than when you're trying to pretend and trying to be so perfect. Isn't that true? Yeah, for sure. I feel like when you set that intention in your heart to heal yes. and God hears it, He starts to slowly put these people in your life mm -hmm. that or feel safe to open up to. Yes. And it's not an overnight thing, at least it wasn't for me. I felt like I had to slowly build this foundation, mm -hmm. almost like Legos or building right. blocks. Right. Like you get to know somebody a little bit at yes. a time and like mm -hmm. days or weeks or months later, you know, you get to the next step with them, the next yeah. step where you feel safe enough to open up. Mm -hmm. And it's just beautiful when you look around you and you realize, you know, these people that God has put there in your yeah. life. Yeah, because so many times, you know, when we do open up and yeah. share from within yes. and 
we're all alike in so many, in ways. So many ways, yeah. you know. Yes. Yeah, we look different right. and we think we're all put together. We're from the North and the South and we're Baptist and Methodist and, you know, and, and, and all these other things. But what, that's what I discovered. And that's what I love about our friendships is because half the time we don't, can't even remember each other's last names, you know. <laughs> And it doesn't matter. I mean, I don't even know what church you go to. I don't know. There's so many things. But we focus on what matters most. And that is you're here. And I, we want to know how we can help one another grow to be who you w want to be, who you feel God wants you to be. I want to hit on something, Ashley, that you talked about, because I think it's so important that it is a building process. And why, do you, why is it a building process, do you think? You know, that's a good question, and I feel like I've thought about that along the way. I think God, you know, plants these seeds in us that grow very slowly, you know, just like your, your flowers grow outside. It's not an overnight process. Right. So it's getting to that first level, and then God almost saying, okay, you can do it. Like, let's take that next step. Like, mm -hmm. take that next step of courage to get to that next level with your friendship. Mm -hmm. And He's there right away. I think He wants to be there right in, in the process yes. with us. Mm -hmm. yes. So He almost has us take it slow so that He can yes. be there to witness. Mm -hmm. And it's trust, yeah. too. Yeah. Is it trust, yeah. too? Say You have to build that trust. You mm -hmm. have to let... And why do we have to rebuild trust? Because we're, we've been, we, we've been hurt, you know. We we so many we've ways. Been, exactly, yeah. Yeah. and and we've been and sometimes lied to. just lied Even to, by ourselves. isolated, you know, yeah. been you know yeah. been you know just misunderstood so mm -hmm. much that you, you know, you don't, you're fearful of even really trying to yeah. get out what you really feel and yeah. what's inside, so. so and your hurt might be different than my hurt, yes. which is different than yours and yours, but, you know, there's that common thread that links us all together, That's which right. is we all just want to heal and right. be, right. be whole in God and, yes. and with each other. Absolutely, and I think that the beauty of sharing our stories is that healing process. Mm -hmm. You know, I look back at those first seven women who I call my rescue crew now. <laughs> that when I really think about, they were the first ones that I opened my heart to. Mm -hmm. I look back and I think about, you know, they they were partnering, I believe, with, with Christ Himself mm -hmm. to be a healing agent mm -hmm. in my life, yeah. to really help me understand that it's okay what we've gone through, that, that your past really can have a purpose and that there's nothing that we have walked through that we can't grow through and that our, our hurts really can be healed. But it is a process and it takes friends to do that. But the beautiful part about it is, is as we're healing, we really can be hope for each other if we're willing to talk about it, right? Right. Yeah. right. And when we can't see God's love for us, I think the friends that He's put in our life are there to show it to us. Yes, and that's so true is. because yeah. I have such dear friends, you know, and I see myself this way, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm unworthy, yeah. I'm not good enough, mm -hmm. you know, and I have this inferiority. Yeah. But then I have my true friends mm -hmm. that will come alongside of me and say, Linda, mm -hmm. No, I wish you could see what I see. I wish you could see what God sees in you. And they become like a mirror to us. They they reflect back to us what who we really are in the midst of the things that we. I don't know about you all, but you know they. We, I do believe that in the enemy that we have an enemy. But I'll tell you what, he doesn't give me half as much trouble as the inner me. You know the things I say to myself. Is it not true that we say things to ourselves that we would never? Never say to anybody else. Yeah. That is absolutely yeah. true. Yes, and so we need these yeah. friends that come along that speak the truth into us. Yes. But I will tell you, it is a fearful thing, yes. you know. And for any of our, our viewers who are listening, our new friends, I want you to understand that many times we will sit in our homes or in our offices and we long for true friendship mm -hmm. when it's all around mm -hmm. us. But someone has to find the courage to step out first. Mm -hmm. And it was each of us in, in some case. But once we step out, we see and experience something that we are we want to hold on to forever, isn't yes. it? We realize yes. that we could not I can't even imagine not having my friends now right. to lean on right. and to run to. You know, it makes me think of Mary in the Bible when she found out that she was pregnant, she she ran to Elizabeth. Yes. 
to right. share her joy. Yeah. Yeah. And her trepidation. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. But to feel so supported in both her happiness and yeah. in her fear. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in our world, we want to run from mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. And that's a biblical perspective of where we should build those friendships that we can run to yeah. them right. when we are in that mm -hmm. trouble Absolutely. or hurt. Absolutely. Yeah. In blessing. the same way, we should run to God when we feel that fear and when yeah. we feel that, you know, inferiority. Yes. We need to just, you know, lean in versus isolate whether you know instead of stepping back mm -hmm. so um you know it, it's it, it's a wonderful thing when you know you have a set of friends that you can reach out to i don't think it's nothing better in the world and mm -hmm. if if you know if you have one good friend that's better than having 10. That's right. And it all begins, it, 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 and it can begin, and it can begin with us. You know, for so many years, I kept waiting for someone to come knocking on my door. And I realized that maybe God was saying, Kim, you be the one. And maybe with our friends who are listening, or maybe, you know, someone will hear this, like maybe, maybe God is giving you this desire because he's saying, quit fleeing in the fear and stand in courage. You know, just, just take a stand and go, I'm, I'm going to refuse the lies. I'm going to refuse and, and just give people a chance. Just give them an opportunity to befriend you because friends are all around us. Her feeling three out of four are saying that they're lonely. Yes. And just that first step of just being open, Absolutely. Yes. you know, yes. having an open heart to it, whether you're the one who's giving or receiving in the friendship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes it it's both. A difference. Mm -hmm. yes. It's both, but. It, it, I remember sitting in church and I felt so alone yeah. and so isolated and like I was just invisible yeah. because all these other women were around talking to one another. Yeah. And so I knew I, exactly. I had to do something. I had to step out mm -hmm. and start making friends. Yeah. And you did. And I remember that. So I remember a time when she wouldn't even talk. We we're going to run. Uh, we'll be right back in just a minute. Thank you for joining us for coffee. Some of the messages talked about today come from Kim's books. To go deeper into the messages, we invite you to learn more. Burdens to Blessings is Kim's signature work that is being used to help people. Men, women, and teens all over the world discover the power of their stories. Burdens to Blessings can also be used as a study in your church, community, or in your own home. To assist your group, you can order a set of professionally filmed DVDs with chapter-by-chapter -chapter teachings by Kim herself, as well as a leadership manual and teaching tips. Cherished is Kim's 365-day devotional. This book will help you discover God's love for you each day. Infinitely More is Kim's latest book that is based on the promise of Ephesians 3.20. God wants to show you how you can truly live your more. You can order these books at our website, kimcrable.org. That's kimcrable.org. Thank you again for joining us. We at Coffee with Kim look forward to hearing from you. Welcome back to Coffee with Kim. In our last few minutes, we'd like to take what we've talked about and maybe put some practical application to it. Maybe as you've listened to my friends talk and listened to the situation that I was in, maybe you're thinking to yourself, that's me. I'm so lonesome. I am wearing these masks trying to be who everyone expects me to be and I'm exhausted too. If that is you, I would want to remind you that the greatest calling in our lives is to be a friend. You know, we're all looking for a purpose. The greatest purpose that we can have is to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, and mind, and then to love those around us. Friends, that's just friendship. And we don't need to overcomplicate it. We just need to look at the thought that there are people around us all the time. What is God calling us to do about it? One of the things that I learned as we stepped out in our first groups and began to talk was I was reminded of C.S. Lewis's quote when he said that uh, friendship is born at that moment when one person says to another, what? You too. I thought I was the only one. 
what do we do in a world that is so consumed with loneliness? Social media, where we're being withdrawn back into ourselves. Someone, some of us, we must take a stand and go, it stops here. And how do we do that? Let me just give you, I want you just to look around. Look, four steps. Listen to your heart. What is your heart saying to you? Oh, open your mind to what could be. Oh, observe the people who are around you because God has put people in your place. And K, get to know them. Do something simple. Invite them to coffee. Do whatever it takes. But you could be the one. If you're feeling lonely in your world, I'll guarantee you there are a lot of people around you who are as well. You could be the one who starts something great in your community. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this session of Coffee with Kim, and I hope that you'll come back next time so that we can have another great conversation. Sunshine, sunshine, where have you gone? Blue sky, blue sky, I'm holding on for you. I won't let storm clouds get in my way this time. Cause I know, I know you're mine. And I've got the joy deep down in my heart. Chasing the rainbow through the rain I know it's gonna, it's gonna It's gonna be a beautiful day Yeah, yeah And I've got the joy deep down in my heart I'm waking up with your love from the start I'm chasing the rainbow through the rain Thank you for joining us for coffee. Some of the messages talked about today come from Kim's books. To go deeper into the messages, we invite you to learn more. Burdens to Blessings is Kim's signature work that is being used to help people. Men, women, and teens all over the world discover the power of their stories. Burdens to Blessings can also be used as a study in your church, community, or in your own home. To assist your group, you can order a set of professionally filmed DVDs with chapter-by-chapter -chapter teachings by Kim herself, as well as a leadership manual and teaching tips. Cherished is Kim's 365-day devotional. This book will help you discover God's love for you each day. Infinitely More is Kim's latest book that is based on the promise of Ephesians 3.20. God wants to show you how you can truly live your more. You can order these books at our website, kimcrable.org. That's kimcrable.org. Thank you again for joining us. We at Coffee with Kim look forward to hearing from you.